So now we're going to look at a couple of distance equals rate times time problems. I think we're only going to look at like two of them probably. Um, so for our first example of these, we're going to say uh, Bill and Jane are in a race. Uh, Bill start. Uh, Bill runs at we'll say uh, six miles per hour, and Jane runs at let's say eight miles per hour. Uh, they start at the same time. And what we want to do is find how long it takes for the distance between them to be 0.25 of a mile, or 0.25 miles, I guess we could say. So, uh, what I like to do with these, we're going to say, all right, um, I'm going to use a distance equals rate times time for Bill. So, I'm going to use subscript uh, Bs for Bill. So, Bill's distance, the rate that Bill runs at, the time that Bill runs for. And we're going to set up a separate one over here for Jane. So, distance Jane runs, the rate Jane runs at in the time that Jane runs for. Since these are, uh, since these are, they run at different rates and stuff, we don't want to just use D equals RT and D equals RT because then we can't tell whose rate are we talking about. Like one of them's at six, the other one's at eight. So this way it keeps, uh, keeps step a little bit straight. Um, so it's easy to tell whose number is whose. So Bill runs at six miles per hour. So Bill's rate is six miles per hour. Uh, Jane runs at 8 miles per hour, so her rate is 8. So what we currently have is the distance Bill runs is 6 times... Oh, we should look at the time. Um, since they start, start at the same time, when it's been like, say, half an hour, it's been the same half an hour for both of them. So the time, since they both start the race at the same time, the time for them is both the same, so we can get rid of the subscript on the time and we can just use the same variable t. If like, I don't know, Bill's shoe was untied and it took him like five minutes to tie his shoe up, then he started racing, then we'd have to track two separate times because uh, the, the time is not the same for both of them. But in this case, they start the race at the same time, so we're able to use just a single variable t for this. So. The distance Bill runs is six times the time Bill runs for. The distance Jane runs is eight times the time she runs for. So eventually the distance between them will be 0.25 of a mile. So kind of what we're saying is they start the race at the same time. Bill's going to run at six miles per hour. Jane's going to run a little faster at eight miles per hour. At some point in time, uh, the distance Jane is that will be 0.25 of a mile further than the distance Bill has run. So they start the race at the same time. Since Jane's going faster, she'll get a little further than Bill. So if we kind of look at this little, you know, scribble that we have here, um, we can kind of see that the equation says, well, the distance Jane goes since she's faster, eventually that'll be Bill's distance plus an extra 0.25. So whenever this is true, whenever Jane's distance is Bill's distance plus 0.25, then Jane is 0.25 of a mile ahead of Bill. So this is what we want to figure out is what time makes this, this equation here true. Well, we have distance Bill, that's six times T. And we have the distance Jane. Jane's distance is eight T, so we're gonna say that's eight T. 
And so what we can do here is say 8t minus the 6t. We'll just subtract the 6t across. That's going to equal to 0.25. So 2t equals 0 0.25. So divide by 2. So t equals 0 0.25 over 2. So it's 0.25 cut in half, which should be uh, 0 0.125. So it'll be that much of an hour. That's how long it'll take. So whenever the time is this, then uh, Jane's distance is Bill's distance plus the extra 0.25. So this is the time we want to solve that equation. So we're going to look at one more distance equals right times time problem real quick here. And then uh, we'll switch over and look at some polynomial stuff. So second example of these distance equals right times time stuff is let's say that you uh, drive uh, from city A uh, at say 60 miles per hour. Let's say you drive back from uh, city, sorry, we should say we drive from city A, let's say, you know, let me just start this over. Drive from city A, we want, we're going to say to city B at 60 miles per hour. We drive back from city B to city A by a different route. And we're able to go a little bit slower. We'll say 50 miles per hour. We'll say the total, the trip took let's say 28 hours. And our goal is to find how far the city's apart. Okay, so I'm going to use the sub, uh, we'll say distance equals right times time. We need one of them. Um, distance, let's say, uh, try to think what, what would the, what are maybe some good words or symbols to use. So we want to go from city A to city B. So I guess we could say distance from A to B equals the rate from city A to city B times the time from city A to city B. And our other equation will be the distance from city B back to city A will equal the rate from city B back to city A times the time from city B back to city A. So I'm going to use a subscript. Uh, if it's AB, that'll be city A to city B. And if it's BA, that'll be city B back to city A. So, um, okay, a couple things. Uh, when you go from city A to city B, your rate is 60. So from city A to city B, our rate is 60 miles per hour. From city B back to city A, we use a different route and we go slower. So we go 50 miles per hour when we come back. Um, the two cities are always the same distance apart. So even though you took a different route to get there, um, one way other than the other. Uh, the distance between the two cities should stay the same. So we're just going to replace these different distances with just the distance uh, D. I think, well, let's see. Mm. No, I guess we do need to keep them... Uh, Well, no, I guess maybe we do need to keep those as separate distances. Hang on, let me think. Um, well, I'm not certain if we got to keep those as separate distances at the moment. So let's just uh, let's just kind of work through the bits that we know and then see 
see kind of where we we end up with stuff um so we do know the time that you would travel between those you're going by a different route so that should uh that should take different different amount of time but we know the time from city a to city b plus the time from city b back to city a we know if we add those two times together that's going to be the total amount of time that you were uh that you are traveling for. And yeah, I guess I guess the cities don't they don't uh, change their position. So we should be able to replace these with the same symbol D. And uh, from here we say uh, time from city A to city B plus the time from city B to city A is 28. So I can replace the time from city B to city A. That's 28 uh, minus the time from city A to city B. So right here, the time from city B back to city A, that's 28 minus the time from city A to city B. So if we write our equations, the distance, you could say the distance is equal to 60 times the time from city A to city B, or we could say the distance is equal to 50 times the 28 minus the time from city A to city B. Okay, so we have two different ways of representing that distance. So yeah, I was just a little unsure up here. I was a little unsure if it we were able to say the same distance, but the distance between the two cities, that should stay the same. Um, even though the route you take changes a little bit, the city still should be the same distance. So to kind of, kind of finish up the problem here, um, oops, I guess we don't really need this bar through here. These two distances are the same, so we're able to set basically the left-hand side of the equation, we're able to set that equal to the right-hand side of the equation. So we're able to say uh, 60 times time from A to B that equals 50 times 28 minus the time from A to B. So we can distribute the 50, we'll get 60 times the time from A to B equals, let's see here, 50 times 28 that's going to be 1400 minus 50 times the time from A to B. So I can add the 50 across, 60 plus 50 is 110 times the time from A to B. That'll equal 1,400. We divide the 110 across, so the time from A to B will equal 1,400 divided by 110, which this will tell me, let's get that approximately what that is. I'm going to round it to like three decimal places. So we'll say that's like 12.727. It's that many hours. So the time it takes you when you're driving from city A to city B is 12.727 uh, hours. We should be able to take that time and multiply it by 60. So we should be able to take that 12.727 and multiply, because that is what the time from city A to city B is, should be able to multiply that by the 60, and that'll tell us the distance we actually went. So I'm just going to multiply this 12.727, I'm going to multiply it by 60, and in the calculator it's going to keep all the decimals, so um, if you type 12.727 and you just multiply that, cut to three decimals, and you multiply that by 60, since I'm keeping all these trailing numbers here, um, my answer might be a little bit different than yours. So we'll get 763.64, I guess we'll say 763.64 will be the distance you traveled. So that many miles, that would be the distance, distance between the two cities. So we'll, uh, we'll stop there on kind of these distance equals right times time ones. And then, uh, we're going to look at polynomials to kind of finish out uh, finish out stuff today. So we'll stop that.